PFL Battle of the Giants, Ngannou versus Frera, Cyborg versus Pacheco. Welcome, everyone, to Winning in the Shadows. I'm Andy. That's Jim. We're going to break down PFL. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to kind of fly through the prelims, and then we'll uh, we'll talk more in depth about the individual fights on the main card. Uh, this has been the dream PFL season, uh, and it is all credit to Jim. 70.5% win rate Thanks. on PFL of a PFL plays for clients over at wager talk and the one trip up was the salt lake city card and even then we went one and two uh but it has been a fantastic uh ride in pfl so we got two more events uh, for 2024 so let's get right into it while we're talking about this if you guys could hit the like button really helps helps the uh algorithm out appreciate you guys and let's see i'm looking around my office we will do light that's the code word, light, L-I-G-H-T. And I know people are going to do the L-I-T-E thing in the comments, mm. and I love it. Uh, so <laughs> if you don't have a hot take, uh, we want to hear your best bet. We love the discussion of the best bet. But uh, if you just want to help us out, leave a comment, type the word light. All right, let's just go through these prelims here real quick. Uh, Ismail and Ben Dodd, I know nothing about this guy. Uh, do you? No, we're we're skipping this fight altogether. Uh, okay, good. Save your money. There's good spots on this card. This is, in my opinion, not one of them. A three and zero guy, an eight and one guy. The eight and one is Canadian MMA. We got to take that into consideration. These guys yeah. based out of Canada are not fantastic. They just aren't. Okay, and anytime you see a ton of canceled fights. It's a little bit of a red flag. I mean, all right, you got a victory over. What do we got? We got one and zero, one and one, or zero and zero. A couple amateur. I'm, I'm out. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Go from there. Plus, the lines for this this fight are going to be closed about four hours before okay. the uh, event starts. So, uh, you have a great theory fading any guy in US in uh, a PFL or any other fight league uh, whose name is Nacho. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, bring them off versus Nacho. Uh, this is bring them off all day, isn't it? This is going to be bring them off all day. A hundred percent. This is a guy they're looking to build very young, 20 years old, seven and O oh. scroll down to his amateurs. Wow. A lot of amateurs. Got players. a lot of amateurs. This isn't your normal 20 year old. Okay. Uh, it's not like the, even the 20 year old we saw last night in contender. You know, this is a lot of experience. This guy is a specialist. If he gets this to the ground, you are not getting back up and he's going to choke you unconscious. If he cannot choke you unconscious, he will pitter patter you from mount until you cannot move. It's very simple game plan. Uh, Nacho has no shot of stuffing these takedowns. None. Zero. This is Ibrahimov all day. Um, when they drop totals, I will most certainly be interested in a fight doesn't start round two or an under one and a half. This is going to be quick. Get this guy a win. Move on. <laughs> I got. I got. This way you got to look at PFL Bellator guys. It's just you. You inadvertently had a great one when you said if he does not choke you out, and I was like, did he just make a nacho reference by saying not? Oh, it was. Oh, great. I totally did that on purpose. It was great. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Zydekov and Derek Sanders again. I don't know much about these guys. What do you think? If it stays on the feet, Sanders is going to have a shot. Okay. But Sanders isn't a great fighter. That's the problem. Nine and four. It's just not good. Uh, beating Sergio Casio. Casio is not a good fighter. Losing to Luis Pena in 2024. Red flag. Everybody. That's a bad one. That's red a bad flag. One. You know, Pena got a win in between his incarcerations. Uh, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Uh, I'll take the 15 and four Russian. He was going to shoot takedowns. And not stop shooting takedowns. This guy is a chain wrestler um, to the utmost extent. Like, if he doesn't get an ankle, I'll stand up, throw two punches, and shoot again. <laughs> so so I will most definitely take the Russian over uh, Derek Sanders. If he can't get the takedowns for some reason, he's in trouble. But I think he's going to get Sanders down pretty easy. Uh, Rafael Stotts and Marcos Breno. Uh, again, for me, this is Stotts all day. Breno's got a really, really nice record, but uh, got choked out by uh, Danny Sabatello. And you got a, you know, uh, lost to Taylor Lapolis. So it feels like when he takes a step up in competition, it ends up not going well. And Stotts, I mean, 20 and two. Look at who he's losing to. Uh, you know, Patchy Mix. And then you got to go a long ways where he loses to Marab. <laughs> so uh to me this is a no-brainer that stats needs to be part of your portfolio this week yes most certainly uh had a great record with uh stats had him against uh archuleta had him both times 
against Sabatello, hit him live in that second Sabatello fight, uh, you can't get finished by Danny Sabatello. You just can't. Now, Stotts is 35. At some point, the wheels are going to fall off. That knockout against Patchy Mix, that was just a beautiful knee. It was a beautiful, well-timed counter knee while Stotts was coming forward. So other than that, he's shown no bad chin whatsoever. Here's the other crazy thing. Stotts is usually the smaller guy. He's going to have a size advantage in this fight. Wow. So I like Stotts a lot, and the line's reflective in that at minus 6 75 i think it's up to now it's getting a little steep now um yeah it's, i'm not saying oh, i'll go lay the minus 675 yeah. but it probably needs to be in parlays uh mm-hmm. or something you need to figure out a way to make money on stats yeah breno i just don't think is going to be able to combat the wrestling of stats and uh benno is breno is training with Pereira and glover but it's not his style like, he doesn't fight like Pereira. Don't be fooled by that. He's not going to be all of a sudden some dominating striker. I think he ends up on his back early. All right. Let's move to the main card. AJ McKee and Paul Hughes. Uh, we, You see this on Contender Series, and you also see it on PFL. Somebody was messing with the lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were recording this on Wednesday, and McKee was – Pretty decent sized favorite. Uh oh, lines dropping on Hughes, and then bang, McKee's up to like minus two hundred on mm-hmm. FanDuel. So uh, there was definitely some line manipulation by uh, some sharp betters, probably some syndicates who got some great value. Uh, sh- <laughs> shout out if you caught that reference. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I feel like Paul Hughes is the like sexy like pick. Like oh, the twelve and one. Oh the. The I yeah the Irish oh yeah didn't he like knock out that guy on the Bellator series? Mm-hmm. He's, he's fighting Cage Warriors. Um, AJ McKee like <laughs> I remember I used to like drafting Tiki Barber in fantasy football leagues because he was just so consistent and he wasn't like the sexy pick, but he would yep. just like run for ninety yards and a touchdown every week. And I feel like that's what you just get with AJ McKee. Like, is anybody buying a pay per view just because AJ McKee is on it? No. Mm-hmm. Are we betting on AJ McKee constantly? Yes. Um, so uh, I know you like AJ McKee. You uh, you were so confident that he was going to be Clay Collard, and it was easier than even you thought it was going to be. So how do you break this fight down? That that's a blemish on our my PFL record is that I didn't throw that as a five percent play. I was so in on that fight, and I was just never pulled the trigger on making it huge. Uh, it was so obvious that fight against Sydney outlaw McKee had to come back. And that's the thing with this guy. He doesn't go anywhere. Like you're never going to see him looking for the door. Even if his law lo- his loss to Pitbull was frustrating. Um, but he never gave up. Uh, there's no quit in this guy. He's been five. His grappling is some of the best on the planet for MMA. And what I love about him is he doesn't settle. He's always working, even when you, he gets in these scrambles where you're like worried, like he's going to get reversed, but he always has a plan. Um, you know, he's flat out said in this fight that he plans on taking Hughes to deep water and we'll see what's, we'll see what he goes. I'll see what you're made of when you get some resistance back the other way. And that's the thing with Hughes. He really hasn't gotten much resistance going back the other way. Uh, talk about that first fight with Bobby King. Uh, in Bellator, he's 40 years old. So they threw yeah. him a 40 year old Bobby King and he did what he should do to a 40 year old Bobby King who had lost two in a row. <laughs> um, the fight before that, he got massive size advantage. Uh, Silva's only five foot five, but really no, you know, grappling game to speak of, uh, to help. Other than that, the rest of these guys are in cage warriors and we have pegged cage warriors as a total fade going forward um losing his loss to to jordan that looks great because we saw jordan in the ufc had a really nice showing against fakradinov um i just think this is too much too soon for hughes and the winner of this is pretty much going for the title shot against uzman so the aj mckee fight uzman fight has been one that's built up this is a win-win for bellator whoever wins if paul hughes wins they get to throw him at uzman and he's gonna kill him uh, if they throw get AJ McKee, it's AJ McKee's shot to gain his belt back. So I like McKee in this spot. I think he wins this by unanimous decision. 
Uh, next fight, uh, Hussein versus Zafar. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try this guy's name. Uh, I, I, I know myself known that I will mangle it. What's your uh, What's your read on this fight? This yeah, isn't a super opinion. exciting fight. Um, Hussein should win again. It just uh, more of a blue chip prospect. Uh, German MMA, not a hotbed. And this is stuff you. Ha- it's nothing yeah, against I'm- these areas when I say this, guys. But with Bellator and these companies that truly are global, because UFCs. They say they're a global company, but most of these fights are happening in the U.S. Let's be real. They tried to bring in some Indian fighters, and it's a yeah, rough watch. Ain't going well. <laughs> um, PFL has been everywhere. They've been all over the globe this year. Uh, they know these scenes. Germany's not big. It's not. There's not a lot of good fighters coming out of Germany. Take Hussein. Hussein probably gets, uh, maybe gets a decision. Maybe could lock up the choke. I don't know, but I think Hussein on the money line is parlayable. Uh, Johnny Eblen and Fabian Edwards. Oh boy, the fade and uh, fade another Edwards. Uh, this uh, this worked out really really good against Johnny Eblen in uh, 2023. Uh, do we see anything similar in this fight? Yeah, that Johnny Eblen went over Fabian. That might have been one of my most successful PFL cards ever. We had Ferreira to knock out Bader on that one. Uh, Impa won for us on that one as well. That was in Abu Dhabi or Saudi Arabia, which is where they are now. So, so they're the very interesting. They're rematching in the same place they fought. Uh, so both guys are going to be, uh, Oh, we know I'm sorry. Him versus Impa. So Fabian hasn't been there. Um, I think this is more of the same. Fabian Edwards is not going to be able to keep Johnny off of him for five rounds. And one thing that we saw in that Impa fight with Johnny Evelyn is God, it, He just doesn't stop. He does not get tired. It doesn't matter the situation. Impa had him on roller skates. He was wobbly. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden, his cardio's fine. His chin's fine. And he's taking Impa down and slamming him. Um, I just don't see the improvements from Fabian Edwards. He's the B-side of the Edwards brothers. He's not as good as his brother. And we just saw his brother get exposed by a wrestler. They're training together. What kind of big adjustments are they going to make? Uh, I think this is Johnny Eblin, Eblin again. I think he gets the wrestling going even earlier than he did. He really didn't wrestle the, s- the first fight. It was more of a knockdown and then a club uh, from there. Uh, but I think he gets the true wrestling going and just mauls Fabian on the ground. All right. We are going to take a look at the two big fights of the night. Uh, just want to recap our plays. Full transparency. Um, we do this every week. Every Monday, we put out our recap videos on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel for 2024. 458 wins, 297 losses, plus 147.85 units for an 8.5% uh, ROI. So doing really good. We'll always tell you when we're winning or we're losing. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord channel, go ahead and do that. Great Discord channel. Lots of knowledgeable people. It's not a lot of nonsense in there. It's not keyboard warriors screaming at each other it's uh sharing good plays good information it's a group of people that take their bankroll serious take it like a business um we can help show you how to uh, take a small bankroll build it up big um so if you're interested in that join the discord channel and for this week we have our five percent pfl ufc pack that is up we have a five percent on this very pfl card but we're going to put all of our pfl plays and our ufc plays in there as well so one gigantic five percent pack you can go to wt.buzz slash al uh for a shortcut but make sure you lock that in really really good betting opportunities on uh on this card all right let's take a look here chris cyborg and larissa pacheco it's our co-main event feels like chris cyborg's been doing this for a long long time uh who do you like in this one hmm heard very strong opinions on this fight okay so i watched uh the face-offs and the press conferences today. Chris Cyborg, Cyborg doesn't look like Chris Cyborg anymore. It, okay. It, you could tell me it's a different person. Um, she's had a lot of, I will say, work done. Why are you getting work done if you're still an MMA fighter? <laughs> it's the old veneers thing. You get the fresh teeth and then you go and get punched in the face. Not really money well spent. Look, she's been in this game forever. This is one thing that Andy loves to fade when you start seeing those exhibition boxing fights show up. Love these. Love these. Later in the career, (laughs) we got an exhibition boxing match. We got another boxing match. 
We got another boxing match, and that boxing match, she wins by knockout in round one. Come on. What kind of fighter is this that she fought? Oh, she's two and two. Oh, she's 37. Against Kelsey. Okay. Yeah, gets Woman's murdered lo- Lost both of her amateur bouts, and now all of a sudden she's boxing Cyborg? How did that happen? Exactly. So, so my big question with this is, when was the last fight that Chris Cyborg fought somebody who could fight back? This was Tyria Wilde's first fight. <laughs> Chris Cyborg. Come on, Cyborg. First fight. Are you serious? You mm-hmm. why are you taking these fights? It's uh, just about money with this woman. Um, when was her last tough fight? Let's scroll down. The not, cats in Ghana was a lamb to slaughter. She yeah. had no shot. Then what do we have more of? Boxing. Boxing. Arlene Blencow, she could not finish, which is a travesty. I don't understand how you go the distance with her. She should have finished that fight. She got tired. She played the decision game. Sinead Kavanaugh, no, no, can't fight back. Leslie Smith certainly can't fight back. Round she could have ended that whenever she wanted. She played with her for four rounds. She beats Blanco by submission. Again, can't fight back. How old was Julia Budd? Oh, wow. Was she 40-something when they fought? <laughs> we're going back to Amanda Nunes, right? Isn't yeah. that what we're talking here? 2018. So now we have Pacheco, who she may have been fighting cans in PFL, but at least these girls are in their early 30s. They're beginning their careers. Um, look, she still beat Kayla Harrison. I don't care what anybody says. So... I think that the smart play is on Pacheco in this. Cyborg is going to do what Cyborg is going to do. She's going to come across that cage. She's going to throw winging hooks. And if she does not knock out Pacheco, and Pacheco can get a takedown and wrestle a little bit or even counter strike, I think Pacheco is going to run away with this. I do not think this fight goes five rounds. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I I would lean Pacheco as well. I, I just I, I can't I can't believe Cyborg is still still doing that. I mean, to me, this is this is a really really tough matchup for her. What is she thirty nine? I yeah. mean, it's just it's a lot of wear and tear. It's a lot of energy, you, you know. And like you said, like boxing, bo- like what are you doing here? You're right. The Katzagano was just that fight was a joke. And now you got to go back to what, what she fought one time since 2022 in, in MMA. That's a long yeah. time without really getting in there. And I'm sorry, when you're boxing, you're not preparing for Pacheco's grappling and takedown. Um, so I'll, I'll take I'll take Pacheco as well um, to win this one. I, I Maybe Cyborg can land a huge shot early and wobble her, but feels like it's got it's round one or nothing uh, for Cyborg. So. 39 years old and 29 pro fights. That's a lot. It's a, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, Francis Agano takes on Renan Herrera. Uh, Francis is a big favorite, and I will just tell you right now, I don't quite understand it. This just feels like name value only on why he's a favorite. So um, let's talk this out. Let's talk Francis and Ghana. What a cherry pick picture this is. Give me a break. <laughs> Come on. Well, first of all, he's, he's on Tapology, and his profile picture is a boxing match. It's a boxing, yeah. Well, let, let's so let's go back and tell the story here of of uh, of Francis and Gatto because I think I, I don't think people really, really, you know, realize you know he this guy was you know he knocks out Blades, Velasquez, Dos Santos, Rosen, Strike, uh, Miocic, then becomes very obvious that he's not happy with the pay. He's very open about that. Has this fight with Cyril Gaon and leaves. Kind of betting on himself that he's going to make more money. And uh, what does he do? He does. He makes more money. He gets these big paydays in boxing uh, with Tyson Fury and you know Anthony Joshua now. This is a really, really big payday for him right now. So he made it very, very clear that money was his number one uh, goal. And it's kind of interesting, at least to me, Jim, when he said that, it just feels like it just hasn't quite been there. I know he won against Gone. That power just wasn't there, man. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't like, and I I don't know, knocking out Miocic and <laughs> Rosen strike. You know, this is a long time ago, man. This is this is five years ago. Uh, so against Gone, 
I think he loses that fight if Gon doesn't try to go for that stupid leg lock in, in round five. This could easily be a loss uh, to Gon. We saw, you, you know, we didn't see power, but we did see sleeves around his knees mm-hmm. uh, in that fight. And then this thing about Fury. I mean, did Fury basically say I didn't train for this at all? Because no, he didn't. He doesn't have to say it. The whole world knows. I mean. The like, whole world know. knows. He didn't even try, and Ganu loses. You know, split decision. Then he goes and fights Anthony Joshua, who did train uh, for that one. And the last time that we saw Francis Ganu, he was getting knocked absolutely out cold uh, by a guy who's got the got the power. So I'm just looking here at Francis and Ganu, and I'm I'm just thinking. I think people are going back to you know the Junior Dos Santos, Cain Velasquez, Curtis Blades fights, and not really realizing this guy hasn't shown us much. His last MMA fight was 2022, but realistically, his last his last time we really saw like huge, real knockout power was March of 2021. And you, I'll let you talk about interviews with him. This just doesn't sound like a guy who's is he, is he really all in on being in the gym every single day like he was, you know, back here in 2017, 18, 19. What are you hearing from Francis? Well, you can you can be in the gym every day. You can. Like, I'm sure he's there every day. But this man has made a lot of money. And uh, look, I'm not here to bash on. And my heart goes out to the man. Losing his son, he flat out said, I didn't want to do this anymore. And the whole reason why he's doing this is he didn't want his son to be the reason why he quit at something. It's admirable. My heart goes out to him. I give him a ton of credit for it. I, I couldn't imagine. But this is still the fight game, okay? It's still the fight game. I think he's in, but he already has said that he wants to go back to boxing. He flat out said in an interview. They asked him how his knees were. He said they're repaired. He goes, I'm still not big into leg kicks. He did say Not this. big not into my, leg not my, kicks. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> not your cup of tea. Well, we know that because you went to boxing, and I don't blame you. I'm not big into leg kicks either. <laughs> uh, but the fact is, is you're getting in a cage now with a six foot eight heavyweight who knows how to kick. So this is a money issue. He has to f- fulfill a contract with PFL. And he flat out said, I didn't think that this fight was ever going to happen. Um, and I decided that I want to get ready for it and I want to not quit. I made a contract. You know, in his contract, is a little thing about Francis. You know, in his contract with PFL, he made sure that they wrote in that his opponent has to make two million dollars. Yeah, he and that when I when I when I talked about the money, he was not only referring to him; he was talking about fighters in general. I left that part. I kind of made him sound like a selfish bastard, but no, he, no it's it, good for him for getting the money. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you're right. He wanted other fighters to to get paid as well. So this so. is also a moment where you kind of wonder if this is just almost a little bit of a passing of the torch. Um, I just don't. I don't know, man. I don't know what we're going to see from the guy. I, I think. This bouncing back and forth stuff. Uh, we've seen in MMA, Hoist Gracie come back for a fight, didn't go well. BJ Penn come back for a fight, didn't go well. Randy Couture come back for a fight, didn't go. I can go down and down and down and down the list. When you are out, you're out. You need to be out. So I think this is going to end up being Ferreira. You want to speak about Ferreira? Yeah, sure. Um uh, so we'll talk about the good and the bad. <laughs> well, first we we know him very well. Oh, we've uh, a been lot making of people money on him. Ferreira. We've been making money on him for a while. Um, in his, his last few fights. Um, uh, I'll go back to uh, you, you know, we'll, we could go back here. You know, back to 2021, where insane power, insane size. Um, it, like w- when he's on, it's just like, man, this guy's an absolute, you know, terror. Um, he can look awkward at times though. It's almost like maybe he's too big, like the right center gravity. You can get him, you know, you can push him off balance, um, for, for, for a bit. So Delia gets the ground and pound win over him. Um, it's, it's a Delia, like these PFL heavyweights are really good. I don't think PFL gets enough credit for how many guys there are that are, that are pretty legit in this division. Um, this this Kunayev fight. So technically he lost this one and then the Kunayev tested positive for every steroid, mm-hmm. all the steroids. Uh, it, it, we've showed the pictures of 
his back knee on that fight. And uh, for we, just, we said, just saw his fat ass. <laughs> he, he, yes, <laughs> yeah. And and uh, Ferrari <laughs> even said he's like thirty seconds into that fight, I just knew. Mm-hmm. And and all Kanaev did was push him up against the fence and hold him there. And Ferrari was just like, I auto, I I automatically knew he was on the juice. He was like, like the, the power and just, you know, it was there. So, you know, he comes, he, he takes a loss, but then you have that big, you know, the, 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 I, it was in this, it was in the summer, I believe when, when can I have a bunch of them tested positive? So he comes back and he just has been running over guys. Now is Maurice screen, you know, the greatest win in the world. No, but he did what he had to do, you know, took care of it. His power though, man, like Bader didn't have a chance uh, in that one. Goltzoff couldn't get anything going, and Goltzoff is really good, really good, R- really good. So I've seen we've seen him get better. Um, the concern is, what if Francis is able to take him down and hold him there? Mm-hmm. That's that's been a problem. Like you know, he's he's lost for the from the ground pound. Can I have did you know for whatever it's worth? Can I have did hold him up against fence, but. He's so big and his power is there. I, 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 if he could just touch Nganu's chin, and I wonder if Nganu's chin is a little bit, I mean, I, I just can't get that image out of my head of him getting clocked, you know, by Anthony Joshua. So, um, I know it's a little bit different, uh, you know, I know MMA is not boxing, but, um, Ferreira does have some pretty good leg kicks. They're strong. We talk, you know, Francis's knees, not sure how good they are. In the end, though, it is Francis Ngannou, man. Like, mm-hmm. this guy, he didn't land any big-time shots against Gon, but that's kind of a – it was it was a very Gon-esque fight where it goes the distance, and there's just, it's just kind of weirdness. But I think Francis is going to know, like, if I'm going to if I'm going to beat this guy, I either have to, I don't know, wrestle him for five rounds, which I, I don't know if I really see that being a potential, or I got to hit him early. I get it, and I really, really gotta gotta hit him early because, you know, here's the thing about Ferreira. You know, he's so tall, and even though you know he did get knocked out, that was ground and pound. It's not on the feet. Um, so, um, this is a big step up for Ferreira, though. Mm-hmm. This is another concern with the nerves. And Ganu's been there, done it. You know, seen it all. Uh, Ferreira, Francis even said, "I know this is a big fight for him. This is his chance to get into first class." Some guys melt. We, we've yep. seen on the biggest stage, some guys melt. And Ganu is going to not be phased, you know, by any of it. This guy has been in, you know, fighting Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. So, um, I, you know, man, I like, of course, this is like such an obvious thing to say, but man, you'd love to see what these guys are working on in the gym. Like, is Ferrero working right? on his takedown defense? Yeah. Isn't Ganu even working? Like, is Ngannou's plan to try and push forward and, you know, get a double leg and get on the ground? Because I don't know if Francis is that guy. He, you know, he was okay against Gon, but again, knees, knees are not in great shape. And Gon is just not hitting nearly as hard as, as Ferreira is. This is a really, really tough fight because I think there are a lot of unknowns about, mm. uh, about both guys. Can we agree that this is not a five round fight? I, I it's pretty funny that they <laughs> they have this five rounds. Like, really, you're gonna put a Ren and Ferreira fight? <laughs> a five you had rounds. to throw that Good as the luck. main event. We have three five round fights to end the night. Um, I I I do think this is gonna be something where it's gonna be a landslide for one or the other. Mm, okay, one or the like other. Ferreira like, gets either, a knockout or Francis wrestles him for five rounds completely. I think if if if, if Francis can wrestle Ferreira, he probably gets the ground and pound. Um, mm, okay. I don't think he's just going to hold on now that the thing with this is uh, we saw it against Bader Ferreira for being a tall guy. He knows how to use his length. Mm, he throws yes. straight kicks. He throws straight punches and he hit Bader from what? Eight feet away with a straight, right? <laughs> <laughs> like it was like, it was literally like Ryan Bader was shocked that the punch could hit him. And with, Ringanu coming out of boxing, I I just wonder if while he's marching forward, he's just the sitting duck for the length of Ferreira. Uh, if Ringanu catches him, he's going to catch him, and that's going to be it. So I think this is a pretty pretty safe. Like fight doesn't start round three. We'll see what that mm. comes out at. You know, I, I think somebody gets served here. 
All right. All right. It's it should be a good one. I disagree with the line. I I, yeah. I think I think I think if you're paying that price on Engano, it's really mainly for the name value, you know, alone. I'm I'm not really sure what not really sure what you've seen on Fra- from Francis in the last few years to make him, you know, warrant uh, this big of a favorite. So, but very, very excited uh, for that one. So, um, all right, that's going to do it for it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a mm-hmm. comment. If you don't have a hot take, if you don't want to post your best bet, just uh, type the code word of the day. It's light. Thanks, Jim. Uh, looking forward to another successful week in PFL. We got our 5% best bet in the PFL that is up right now. It's going to come with all of our PFL plays and our UFC plays. That can be found over at wagertalk.com. You can use the shortcut wt.buzz slash AL. Good luck on your place, and we'll see everyone later. See you guys later.